Hi. The refrigeration system in your store is the single most expensive piece of equipment to own and operate. The purpose of this videotape is to give you an overview of the refrigeration system and how it works. Let's take a look. Your store's refrigeration equipment is made up of compressors, a receiver, and a refrigeration panel located in the compressor room. It includes walk-in cooler boxes, remote air-cooled or water-cooled condensers, and overhead piping. The customer side of your refrigeration system includes the display cases. Refrigeration equipment makes up 45% of all the fixture costs in your store. For a refrigeration system to function, we need four basic components. A compressor, a condenser, a metering device, and an evaporator coil. The compressor, which is often called the heart of a refrigeration system, takes the cold, low-pressure refrigerant leaving the evaporator coil in the display case and compresses it into a hot, high-pressure gas. After the hot refrigerant vapor leaves the compressor, it is sent to the condenser. The purpose of the condenser is twofold. First, to reject the heat that was removed from the display case or walk-in box, and second, to convert the vaporized refrigerant back into its liquid state. An air-cooled condenser is a cluster of tubing designed to transfer heat by passing air through it. Water-cooled condensers are similar, except the tube bundle is enclosed in a tank and water is used to remove the heat instead of air. After condensing into a liquid, the refrigerant is circulated out to the refrigerated display cases and passes through the metering device located at the inlet to the evaporator coil. A temperature sensing bulb is attached to the metering device. This bulb senses whether the metering device should open up and permit more refrigerant into the evaporator coil, or whether it should close and slow up the flow. The refrigeration system also accounts for 40 to 50 percent of your store's electric bill each month. These costs can be reduced by the proper care and maintenance of the equipment. When equipment is maintained in top condition, three types of dollars are saved. Service dollars, because service calls are minimized. Energy dollars, because energy is not wasted. And product dollars, because product quality is maintained. Equipment sometimes requires periodic service from an outside source. However, most parts of the preventive maintenance program can be performed by store personnel. An iced up coil is the most common reason for a service call. The cause is usually a stopped up drain located in the bottom of the display case. If display cases are not cleaned on a regular basis, price tags, price labels, product spills and wrappers will collect in the drain. These materials become moistened by defrost water, collect in the drain, and block the defrost water from leaving the case. The iced coil situation can be suspected if there's a slow rise in case temperature. Noisy fans can also indicate an iced up coil, although sometimes this may just be a loose fan blade. It should be noted here that a frozen waste outlet situation is not limited to frozen food and ice cream cases. The coils in beverage, produce, dairy, deli, and meat cases are also operated below freezing and therefore are also susceptible to ice ups. Remember, 50% of all service calls are caused by dirty equipment. To properly clean refrigeration equipment, first remove the merchandise from its display case to the cooler box. Remove the bottom grates and pans from the display case. Turn off the refrigeration by shutting off the liquid line valve in the display case. If the case drain is blocked with ice, open it with hot water. Never use an ice pick or sharp object. Most drains are located in the center case. One exception are Hussman reach-in door type cases which have the drain in the right side of the case. An iced up evaporator coil will normally defrost overnight. After defrosting and before using water to clean the case, pick up the debris, price tag, solid merchandise and the like from the bottom of the case using the shop vacuum. Do not flush the debris down the drain. When cleaning the case, never use abrasive cleaners or steel wool, and don't spray water on the fans. 
Never apply high-pressure water or cleaning fluids directly onto the seams where the cases are joined. This can damage the seals and cause water to leak onto the floor, creating a safety hazard to employees and customers. For your safety, always wear gloves when cleaning the case because the fins and coils have sharp edges. These basic rules apply to cleaning all display cases. Remove product from the display case to the cooler box. Remove bottom grates and pans. Turn off the refrigeration. Open block drains with hot water or defrost overnight. Never use sharp objects to clear a drain. Remove debris and solid merchandise by hand or with a shop vacuum. And never use high pressure water or cleaning fluids directly on the seams. Once the case is cleaned, you must clean the drain line itself. Do this by flushing the drain line until there's a full flow of water coming out of the drain line. After the drain line is cleaned, the floor sink should be cleaned. Always make sure that the screen in the floor gets put back after being cleaned. The best approach is to check the floor sink for clogs before you defrost the case. It's bad news if the floor unit is plugged before you clean. To clean self-service cases for meat or produce, single or multi-deck, expose the bottom of the case and case drain by lifting the handle of the fan plenum and latch the chain to the back of the case. Remove the front grate holder and begin cleaning the case. For dairy, deli and beverage cases, make sure you clean the bottom and back of the coil as well as the drain. Service type meat, fish and deli cases are cleaned in the same manner as the self-service cases, except there is no fan plenum that needs to be lifted in order to get to the drain. After the cases are completely cleaned, they need to be restocked. Proper loading or stocking of the display cases is an essential part of energy conservation in your store. There are three basic rules. One, move merchandise rapidly from the cooler box into the display case. Two, rotate the merchandise. Three, do not place merchandise outside of the refrigerated display area of the case. Observe the load limit lines. These rules are important because display cases are designed to remove the heat from the air surrounding the product, not to remove heat from the product itself. Rotating product is necessary because both the color and texture of food depreciates noticeably as a result of going without refrigeration for even short periods of time. Also, if product is not rotated, ice will build up on the back and under the shelves. Overloading display cases is bad because it increases the mixing of store air with case air, compressor running time, case temperature, the heat needed for the store, and finally, it increases defrost requirements. If merchandise is displayed beyond the load limit lines, then the refrigerated air is deflected out of the case. If your store's meat volume warrants stocking additional product in the case, then lower the meat grates. Do not stock over the load lines. Conversely, if your store's volume is such that you do not need as much product, raise the grates. Lower volume, high grates. High volume, low grates. Learn the load limit lines for all cases and make sure that product is stocked within them. This cross-section view shows the three air systems of a display case. The main air pattern surrounds the product. In front of the main air pattern is a non-refrigerated air curtain. There is also a front ambient or store air curtain outside the main air pattern. Keep merchandise within the load lines. This rule applies to all types of display cases. Don't let merchandise block the return air flues. In the dairy department, for example, a blocked air flue can raise the case temperature and reduce shelf product life by as much as five days. You can reduce refrigeration costs and eliminate potential problems. Make sure the doors of the rear loading dairy beverage cases are closed when not being stocked. The dairy case will not maintain its required temperature if the doors are left open. Some of the other things that can interfere with an efficient refrigeration system are refrigerant leaks, dirty condensers, iced up coils, 
inoperative fans, and a cluttered machine room. Refrigerant leaks are the second most expensive maintenance item in supermarkets. A compressor replacement ranks number one. But often a leak can be spotted visually before it causes real problems. Some of the telltale signs of leaks, or potential leaks, are bubbles in the sight glasses located in the liquid line coming out of the receiver, or fresh oil in the compressor room or any place where your refrigeration lines run. If you spot a leak, notify your store manager. A properly operating refrigeration alarm system can save thousands of dollars, dollars which affect your store's profitability and you. Air-cooled condensers must be periodically inspected and cleaned. Remove any debris around the condenser or trapped underneath. Even a slightly dirty condenser can add significantly to the compressor's electrical consumption. And a clogged condenser will force a compressor to operate beyond its limits and shorten its life. For those stores with water-cooled condensers, check the drain line for the amount of water bleed off. If the condenser is draining a significant amount of water, notify the store manager or call for service. The cooler box coil should be kept clear of dust and caked on dirt. To clean these coils, turn off the switch at the coil, or in some cases, disconnect the twist lock plug from the electrical receptacle. Remove dust and dirt with water and a mild detergent. After cleaning the coil, turn on the switch or reconnect the twist lock plug. Fans are used extensively in refrigeration systems. Be on the lookout for malfunctions. During the life of a display fixture or a blower coil, it's possible that a fan blade can become damaged, that bearings become worn, or the motor burns out. Notify your store manager if you hear odd fan noises, such as rattling, whining, or grinding sounds, because these are the usual indications of fan failure. Loss of a case fan can lead to hot spots in the case, premature icing of the coil, product loss, and possible compressor failure. Some compressors require auxiliary fans to keep the compressor from overheating. If these fans are not operating when the compressor is running, the compressor motor will overheat and compressor life will be shortened. Conserve energy and reduce repairs by making sure your ice cream night covers don't block the discharge and return air grills. Make sure the strip doors on your walk-in freezer box are intact. Don't let the warm air in the back room warm up the freezer box. Keep the top of your refrigerated cases clean by using the shop vacuum. This will eliminate dirt getting into the ambient air curtain. Keep the top of the walk-in cooler boxes clean. It's not a place for storage. To eliminate product loss, develop a schedule for checking refrigerated case and walk-in box temperatures on a regular basis. These points are especially important when your store is being remodeled or when work is being done on the refrigeration system. Always keep the case thermometers in good working condition and be aware that there is a Fahrenheit and a centigrade scale. The compressor room 